With the Windows 10 end of life coming up right around the corner just in October, I've decided to move my work computer here to Windows 10 LTSC. Now, you might be thinking about doing the same thing, or you might be doing something maybe even smarter than that, and that's moving to Linux. There's a lot of different varieties of Linux out there. That's not what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk to the people who need to stay on Windows 10 for whatever reason, and I hear all you Linux folks, yes, I know everyone should move, uh, but there are some pieces of software and some things that just cannot be done with Linux. So for those of us who still want to use Windows but don't want to move to Windows 11 and don't want to have, you know, the recall AI nonsense teams and whatever else installed, there's LTSC, which is like their enterprise flavor of Windows. So while you're looking into this, the first thing you might notice are we have a couple different versions of LTSC. We have 2019 and 2021. I'm just going to focus on 2021. Now, when it comes to getting a copy of LTSC, you'll have to go online and find an ISO file. And then you're going to notice that it's it's not activated and I've got a way to activate. But first, when you're installing it, there are two different versions that you're going to be presented with. You're going to have just the LTSC version and then the IoT LTSC version. Which one should you pick? And for me, always IoT. That one's going to get a few more years of updates. I believe the regular version ends in uh, 2027, I think it is. And the IoT version will give you updates all the way until 2032. So just go for that one. Under the hood, they're almost identical. There are a couple small changes, but I don't think anyone's going to notice. So let's go ahead and hop in. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you how I activated my copy of Windows 10 LTSC. So where do I get my LTSC keys? Well, I always get OEM keys because they're way less expensive than getting a retail key. Take a look at this nonsense right here. This is what Microsoft wants you to pay for a retail key. Now, LTSC keys, you can't even get them like this. They're mostly for like enterprise grade stuff and you get them through totally different means. However, there's one place that I go to get all of my keys and that's who keys. So right here, we can go ahead and grab a Windows 10 LTSC 2021 key, which is what I'm gonna be using. And the price is gonna be lower than this because you know, they've got a 20% off coupon code, but no, let's go ahead and add one of these to our cart right here by clicking on the cart. So it says 1481, let's try TS25, hit apply. And we're gonna get our LTSC key for only $11.11. .11. Now, if you're gonna be getting other versions of Windows, you can get Windows 11 Pro right here. So Windows 11 Pro, when you get to the checkout page, you can see TS25 brings that down from 3096 all the way down to 2322. You've got Windows 10 Pro. We also have Windows 10 home and also Windows 11 home. If you're using Office right now, there's that monthly subscription fee. If you grab it over here, it's just a one-time fee and you're gonna get 25% off this as well. So you can get Office 2019 or 2016. Just pick the flavor that has the stuff you need. I'm gonna go ahead and check out with this copy of LTSC right here and I'll show you exactly how to unlock your copy of Windows. I'm gonna click on submit order here, put in your credit card details right here. Hopefully no one steals my credit card information. All right. Success. All right, we're gonna be redirected to our user center, but I'm impatient, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on it right here. And then you'll see all of your keys and codes right here. So just click on View Keys, Codes, and then scroll down again and click on Get the Key. Right here is gonna be your key. So just copy all of this right here. Open up your copy of Windows, and this will work on 10 or 11 or whatever. I've got 10. Click Start and type Activate and you'll see activation settings. Click on that. Scroll down and you'll see change product key. Just click here and paste your product key in right there. Check it out. Activation. Windows is activated. Now we can come in and personalize, change our wallpapers, change our background colors. So have fun doing all that. All kinds of fun backgrounds now. Awesome. If you're wondering where OEM keys come from, well, last month I made a video, so I'll put a link to that down in the description. It talks about all the different places that OEM keys come from and why I always like to use an OEM key rather than just a regular retail key. So thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring. And now let's take a look at LTSC. And right now I'll make a little bit of a correction from the last video I made where I was talking about all the stuff that's not a part of Windows 10 LTSC. Well, in 2021, the Edge version actually is Chromium. I was incorrect and said that it came with the old school Internet Explorer, uh, but the fact is I never actually opened up Edge. I just used a PowerShell script to install Firefox immediately. So yeah, one more correction from the last video. I said that the direct storage is not available and apparently that's now been backported to Windows 10. So it's on LTSC. The direct storage thing works in your video game. So those are the two corrections from the last video, um, which is really cool. Direct storage is something that I think I could have lived without, but if we got it on Windows 10, uh, I'll take it. 
but this is not the default um, when it comes to like the taskbar. I am using retro bar. So if that's throwing you off, I really like the quick launch and I like how it separates that from my open programs. And then I always keep it like this so I can see what I've got going on down here. So that's what I'm going to be using. I created this theme myself. If you're curious about retro bar, well, I'll put a link to the description in my video about retro bar. I find it to be a much better way to use your computer. It's a little bit old school, but I, I find that I'm working faster. So here's how I have mine set up. And I also have open shell installed for my alternative right here when it comes to uh, your start menu. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I do with my PowerShell when I first get Windows installed. This works on Windows 11. So I've got a little PowerShell script right here. Now you can just run the PowerShell script, which is weird. Uh, sometimes I haven't been able to get this to run. Depending on your version of Windows, you'll need to like create a bat file that runs the PowerShell script. But I find it's actually easier just to have a nice script here that's ready. I comment out by putting a pound sign in front of any line that I don't want to install. So like this, you know, machine, I don't need the benchmarking stuff because I'm not testing this. This is whenever I'm like, you know, I get a new machine in and I want to do tests on it for a video. I'll just have all this stuff installed, but I don't need performance, all this performance testing stuff, Geekbench or whatever. So I can comment all that out. But I do want Jellyfin because this is a computer I'm going to use. So um, and this is all going to be installed with Chocolatey because right up here at the top, it's going to install Chocolatey. And then I have a little feature here that just, you know, enables yes to all or else you're going to have to sit here and babysit it and that's not what i want to do now i want to install gog and i want to install steam but i don't install them to my c drive and i don't install them to the regular directory so i have some arguments right here so chaco install right there we're doing gog galaxy and then the install arguments are and then you just put the uh yeah i guess you go ahead and put the the directory you want it in so d games and then gog galaxy that's where i want it to go and then with steam uh, you just need to do and ignore checksums because sometimes there's issues or whatever. But I'm going to put all this down below and you can download my entire script and then add your own chocolatey installation stuff to it. Install anything you want. So again, I don't need these benchmarks, but I do want just the .NET and the runtimes. I do want the Klyte codec pack. Uh, what the hell? I'll, I'll install Simu. Why not? Ear Trumpet. Absolutely want Ear Trumpet. Don't want Ubisoft Connect. Nope, not playing Far Cry 5 or anything. And then down here, I've got a few more things. I've got um, .NET 6.0. I'm going to install that just for whatever stuff. A lot of you know different things you're doing are going to require .NET 6.0. Sometimes emulators require it. Sometimes games require it, whatever. Now, if we go down here, I'm enabling dark mode. So I'm just doing all this in one pass. I'm going to enable my dark mode. Can you see this? Zoom in a little bit. There we go. So I'm enabling dark mode. I'm moving my start menu to the left. This is only really for um, Windows 11. So I'm just going to comment that out because I'm using Windows 10. I'm going to change my Explorer viewer uh, mode to compact. That's mostly again for Windows 11. So I don't need it for Windows 10. And I'm going to set my Windows Explorer, which is this, to open up. Normally when you open it, it like opens up to this nonsense. And I don't care about that. I want it to open up right here so I can get to my drives. So I just tell it to open up this PC first with this command. And I have the view options, which if you come over here and, you know, click on view and go to your options, you can actually change these view options just with some commands. So I'm going to save myself some time and I have a couple of scripts to say show hidden files, show file extensions. And I'm also going to set my uh, power plan to high performance. Now, you don't need to do this on Windows 11. In fact, I would say don't do this on Windows 11. It's gotten really good at you know managing the performance mode so i'm actually not even going to do it on windows 10 and we'll just see how it goes on this computer i don't want my screens to turn off because i do a lot of recording in here i'll do it all manually and then i've set my sleep time to five hours just setting all that right here so and then the next thing i'm doing this is mostly for windows 11 uh, removing all the widgets i'm using ltsc so i don't need to do this but if you want to remove the you know the widgets and the weather and all that nonsense that's all over the place just copy all this this removes Copilot. Since I'm using LTSC, I don't need to do that either. There we go. And then at the end, restarts Explorer, which is your Windows Explorer again, which is your shell, restarts that. And then I'm going to set Firefox as my default and uh, pretty good to go. This is just running some benchmarks. So I'm just going to copy all this, like check this out. Copy all this. I'm going to copy down to here. We'll leave that alone for now. If you can copy that too, if you want to copy that. Now I'm going to open PowerShell as administrator. Very important to do it as administrator. You can hold Control Shift and open PowerShell as administrator if you're on 
uh, Windows 11 or regular Windows 10 for LTSC, you have to add some things to the registry to allow you to hold Control Shift. So yeah. Anyway, paste all that stuff in there, press Enter, and go get yourself a cup of coffee. By the time it's brewed, it'll probably be done. This is pretty quick, usually with fast internet access. And we're just letting it uninstall all this stuff. And, you know, if you're not opening it up uh, like I did, you can just open it up in any text editor, you know, whatever. Notepad++ is the one I normally use, but this script is installing Notepad++, so I'll just wait until that's finished. Yeah, see, look how fast a lot of this stuff is. And I love the fact that I can do this and just install it exactly where it's going to go. With Ninite, you cannot tell it where to go, but, you know, if you're using the PowerShell, you can add the arguments to tell it what directory it's going into. If you see something like this, don't worry, it'll keep going. If you just come in here to pictures or whatever and open something up, let's open this tiny little picture of Jade, it opens up right here in Paint, which I kind of find. You can do stuff with Paint. If you know what you're doing, you can just come in here and be like, ah, no, no, give me that. It, you know, it lets you do stuff. You can crop and then save, whatever. It works. Don't need to save that. So Paint is pretty functional. But if you want something that's a little bit more like a lightweight, simple app that allows us to scroll back and forth between pictures where well, you're going to need to download something else. I realize that Windows Essential is still floating around out there on the web. Now, this is something from 2012, but it works on Windows 10. The, ins the installer has been taken down. So if you like the old school photo app and, you know, Windows Movie or whatever it's called, then get this and store it somewhere on a NAS, on a USB, something because I don't expect this to be on the internet forever. So right here, we need to get our offline installer. Over here on winhelponline.com, they've been nice enough to give us all these mirrors. English UK, no thank you. I speak regular American English. So right there, grab the version that you need. And we're not gonna install everything because this installs a, a mail app and uh, some other stuff. So we don't need all that. We don't need the oh, messenger. Wow, that's a blast from the past. So let me try one of these mirrors. Which one is going to work? It's kind of slow, but there we go. We got it. All right, now, as soon as this is finished, we're going to run it. Windows Live Essentials. Now, this is the best part right here. Oh, we got to go, go ahead and get our net framework installed. Let that do its thing. Now, once that's finished, I will make this bigger so you can see it. How about that? Don't need anybody complaining about the eyes hurting. All right, so once we get in here, you can install everything, but don't do that. Click here to choose the programs you want to install because, you know, Messenger is not going to work anymore. Mail. And do you want Writer? Blog like a pro photos. I'm going to install Writer just as a blast from the past. Yeah, and Microsoft OneDrive is already installed. Why is it there? I didn't think it was going to be installed with this, but whatever. So there we go. We'll let it install Photo Gallery and Movie Maker. I'm letting it install this stuff just because I want to mess around with these old school programs. Later on, I'll be able to remove Movie Maker if I want to, but Photo Gallery is the thing I want to mess around with first. Just let it install. All right, let's go ahead and uh, try the Windows Photos thing here. Pictures. Let's open up this wallpaper here. I'm going to go to just right click on it, and then I'm going to go down and do Open With. And now I have my Photo Gallery right here. I'm going to click on Choose Another App, however because I want to set this to open always, always use this right here. Photo gallery, there we go, okay. Yes, yes, I agree to these <laughs> ancient things. And look at that. So now we've got our old school style app. We can left and right, this is actually really nice. We got our rotate options right there, zoom in right there, and we can click up here to edit. Yeah, yeah, I don't need to sign in. And this is our photo gallery app, we can just mess around. I haven't, I haven't messed with this in forever, jeez. There we go. Get in here. Now we can crop if we need to or whatever. So yeah, this is a fun little app. It works just fine. I just like the fact that when you open it, it's snappy. It works fine. Got you zoomed down here or you can scroll or whatever. It's just, I like this photo app. It's nice. Slideshow. Oops. There we go. Ah, whatever. Let's see what Movie Maker's all about. I haven't seen that in forever. Wow. Look at this thing. <laughs> Now, you should have a calculator, just if you press the Start button, let me use the Windows 10 Start menu. Type Calc, we have just our regular old calculator right here. You can grab a calculator like this, and just click here to download it, right there. Windows Calculator, I like the one I have, but if you need something fancier, you can get this, and I'll put a link for this in the description, so you can get this one if you like. All right, let's say for some reason you need the Windows 11 store. Well, there's a couple different ways to do it. The easiest way may work for you. It should work for most people. In the PowerShell, you simply need to type WS reset space dash I. That's Windows store reset space dash I, and this should install the Windows store. 
I don't want the Windows Store, so I'm not going to type this, but I just wanted to show you that. If this does not work, maybe you haven't updated, maybe you need to update and reboot your system. But if that does not work, there's another way to install this. Someone on GitHub was nice enough to put together this list of stuff right here. So you just download the 7-zip file. I'll link this in the description. And then when you come over here, you'll open this up and see that it's filled with stuff. So what's all this? These are all a bunch of app packages for the store, the net framework, all this kind of stuff, Xbox, whatever. So what we're going to do is just drop this into a folder and then I'll show you what to do. All right, so I'm gonna put it in this folder I just made called install store. There we go. So all you have to do is just right click on add store and run as administrator, and it's gonna install all the stuff in here. Now, if you don't want the Xbox identity thing, you can just delete that. Is there anything else in here you don't want? You can delete that. So there's a few of the things. Uh, I don't need the purchase app. I'm not gonna be buying any of the store stuff. So now you can just install it this way. It'll install the store without the Xbox identity and also without the ability to purchase things or whatever. So you can do that if you want to. Now, if that is not available, well, you can do it manually and I'll show you how to do that right now. There's another place on GitHub that has all of those packages that you can download manually. So we can do that. So lots of different ways. The first two ways should work just fine. And we have all this stuff. See all these different things? If you want to be able to easily install apps, well, there's something called the app installer. This makes it easier than doing all this stuff through the command line. So once you get the store installed, you can use the app installer to install apps, of course. This works with Winget and it works behind the scenes. So yeah, all this stuff's available. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description. I don't need any of this stuff on my system, so I'm not going to install it. So yeah, but if you need it, by all means, you do you. And I'll have all this stuff linked below so you can uh, get by on your own. All right, so that's how I have Windows 10 LTSC set up. I mean, I didn't do too awful much because I think the point of this video is that you don't really need to do too much because we've kind of got desktop interfaces solved. And a lot of the stuff that we're doing now is moving away from the core experience that the customer wants and moving toward a manufactured experience that's basically like an enshittification process to extract your time and money directly from you and harvest your data at the same time. Ooh, I'm down here. I'm up here. <laughs> this new camera's fun. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Head over to epicpants.com. 50% off on all the mice. I should show you because I'm uh, good at this. All right, calm down. I'm over here. I pushed a button and now it's following me. All right, over here, hoodies. Like, not very many left, so I'm going to skip past. Mice, 50% off with the coupon code Happy Mouse. That'll show up in your uh, check at checkout, or whatever. All right, so I'll see you over on epicpants.com. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.